Welcome to the Juno Blanket tutorial. It's a crochet corner to corner join as you go. It's not a continuous join as you go, so there will be two ends per block, but it is so much better than having to sew. The yarn we'll be using is African Expressions. The colors are 1286, which is a beige, 1001, which is a creamy whitish color, and 1079, which is a teal. The yarn in question is, let's see what the makeup of the yarn is, 15% mohair, which is what gives it this beautiful lustrous sheen, 40% superwash wool, which is very luxurious, and 45% acrylic, which makes it really lovely and practical, washable. This is one of my absolute favorite yarns. Other equipment you're going to need is a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. In this case, I'm using a tulip a pair of scissors and a darning needle. I like the darning needle that has a slightly bent tip as it just makes life so much easier. So let's begin. We're going to start the tutorial. The pattern is to be found in the latest issue of Yarn Magazine. The links will be in the description box below. We're going to start with just the basic corner to corner. I'm not going to explain this in great depth because there are so many tutorials about corner to corner and it is written out in the pattern. So let's begin. Find the end. Right. What I like to do is just do a slip knot. You can do a normal slip knot any way you like. Then what we need to do is we need to chain six. Five, six. Now we're going to begin building the very first block. Corner to corner is built on the diagonal, so you'll note that it will be one block, then two, and so forth. So we start by working a treble, UK treble, um, US double, into the fourth chain from the hook and make a treble. Then we work into the next chain with another treble. Please know that when I'm saying treble in the US, I'm referring to a double crochet. And into the last one, and that gives us our very first block. What we're going to do now to start the next row is chain six, four, five, six. Without turning your work yet, work into the fourth chain from the hook. So it's exactly the same method. Second treble. Third treble. And now we're going to turn, flip this one over. So you'll see the, it sort of works to start in an L shape. Now that th chain three we did at the beginning of the, each block forms a nice little chain three space. Mine are fairly tight. Um, you may find yours are a bit looser. If you find that it's too gappy, then you can either go down a hook size if you're finding your, your stitches are consistently loose. Otherwise, you can just do your chains a little tighter. So we slip stitch into that chain three space, then we chain three. That gives us our very first treble. So you'll see there's four across each one. One that forms, the, th the chain three forms the first treble, which leaves chain space, and then three trebles. So we're going to make the three trebles now. One, two, and three. Next, we need to start the new row. So you can see it forms a little L shape. What we're going to do now, again, chain six, five, four, five, six. Then we're going to work into the fourth chain from the hook, first treble, second treble, and third treble. Oops. Then we're going to flip these around and into this chain three space here, we're going to slip stitch. Then we are going to chain three. Now I must say that this is working the increases until we reach six blocks. The Juno blankets blocks are six by six squares. So when you reach six across on the diagonal, you'll go, or, or you can look at it six here and six up. 
So then you would start to decrease. So for now we carry on increasing. So we form three trebles, UK trebles, US doubles, into that chain three space. Now often corner to corner is worked on a slightly bigger hook for many people. So if you are finding that the stitches are too tight for you with a 3.5, you're also welcome to go up to a four millimeter hook. Right, into the next chain three space, we slip stitch, chain three, and then three UK trebles, US doubles, one, two, and three. Right, and we've just formed the second row. So to start again, we chain six, one, two, three, four, yes, and then we UK treble into the fourth chain from the hook, and then another treble into the next chain, and the third treble into the last chain. Right, now we're going to flip the work slip stitch into that chain three space formed on the last row, chain three, and three UK trebles, US doubles into the next chain three, uh, into that, sorry, the same chain three space. Slip stitch into the next chain space, three trebles, I like to hold the block down a little bit so you don't hook it with your hook, the one that's directly left of what you're working. Slip stitch into the last chain three space, chain three, three trebles UK or US doubles into the last blocks chain three space. Now you can nicely see how it's beginning to form on the diagonal. Right. You carry on until you've got six blocks up and six blocks across, and then I'll meet you back here. Now you can see that we have six blocks cross and six blocks up. This is for making a square. You can make rectangles with corner to corner, but in this case we are making a square. Now we need to fill in this gap here. And to do that, we're going to begin decreasing. There's two methods to use for this. The first one is to slip stitch into each stitch across to bring you into that space. Or you can chain three. Let me show you the second method. One, two, three. Turn your work and slip stitch into the corner. It can give a very nice edge, but slip stitching into the stitches is fine too. So use whichever method you prefer. I'm going to slip stitch into the stitches. So to do that, I turn my work and I slip stitch into each stitch across. until I end up slip stitching into the chain three space. Now I chain three, and then I'm going to work three UK trebles, US doubles into that stitch. So it's very much like the same as for increasing. You're just going to slip stitch into the space you need to be so that you don't create any more blocks up or to the side. Slip stitch into the next block street chain three space. Whoops. Sorry, chain three, three trebles, US doubles, two, oops, I'm having a real moment here, two and three. If you hear a humming in the background, I'm afraid there's not much I can do about that. That's a swimming pool pump that's on, but hopefully it's not too loud for you. Then I slip stitch into the next chain three space of the block up, chain three, and then three UK trebles, US doubles. Now 
If I'm going too quickly for you, feel free to slow the video down to the pace that works for you. Then I'm going to slip stitch into the next one, chain three, and then slip stitch into the next one. Another three trebles, one, two, ah, sorry, another three chains. One treble, two, three. Now, when we get to this last box, we're not going to build on top of it because we don't want to create any more blocks. So what we do is slip stitch into this chain space here, flip your work over, and then we slip stitch into each stitch across, working our way up to that chain three space. Oops. This yarn can be a little slippery with this hook. And into that chain space. Then you, as you can see, we're going to start filling in the next section. So don't worry about all the turning. You can flip and turn your work as you need to, as works best for you. So then I chain three. Three trebles into the chain space. Then I slip stitch into the next one. Chain three. And three trebles into the next into the same chain space and so on and so you're going to build your way all the way to the top here I'll meet you there now again we don't want to build any blocks on top of here so we slip stitch into the chain three space flip our work over and slip stitch into each stitch cross working our way up to the next chain three space. Now what I like to do is turn my work so that I'm working, stacking them on top of each other. Chain three, three trebles. You can see I fold my work down so that I don't hook it, but you can do hold it any way that suits you. And three trebles. I'm going to slip stitch into the next chain three space Two, for the next two blocks. Slip stitch into the last one. Right, and three trebles. And slip stitch into the block next door because we don't want to go in any more height. And slip stitch into each stitch across. Now it becomes very clear how we have started to fill in that space. We've basically got three blocks to go, which it's so quick. Corner to corner is one of my favorite things because you just blaze through it. So I chain three, three trebles into the chain space. So you can see it's pretty much the same thing over and over and over. The only difference is those slip stitches when you are on the decrease to bring you into the chain spaces. And three trebles. Then slip stitch into the block next door. Flip your work over and we're going to slip stitch into each stitch across, working our way to the chain three space. Very last block, chain three, work three trebles or UK doubles into the very last block. Now what you're going to do is slip stitch into the block next door. But now we don't want to finish our work here. So what we're going to do is turn the flip our work over and slip stitch across so that we are working, finishing off rather, into the corner. 
So that's first slip stitch, second, third. Then I like to go into this gap and finish off. That couldn't possibly be easier. Right. And then you can snip off your work and just fasten it off. You can either pull the tail all the way through or just pull it through. Welcome to part two of the Juno tutorial. In the last part, we created the very first corner to corner square, which is this one here. As you will notice, the squares have little blocks. Some of them run on the horizontal and some on the vertical. And then obviously the square is built on the diagonal. Now, in order for us to start the next part correctly, the square must be orientated correctly. As you will see at the bottom right hand corner of square one, the, the block runs horizontally and the block next to it vertically. So we will build our very first block, um, very first block of square two right next to that and that will run vertically. So as you can see, they alternate between vertical and horizontal. What I like to do is orientate my block correctly and then to know exactly that this is block one because it can get a little bit confusing. I like to mark the right side of the work. With your block facing exactly in this manner, you will see that this will remain the right side of the work throughout. And it'll remain the right side of the entire blanket for when you are doing the border. So the very first thing we're going to do is choose a contrast color. In this case, I'm going to use the white. The colors that I'm using and the order of them are not indicative of how the pattern runs. You will, they're just so that you can see better you are going to need to refer to the written pattern from yarn.co.za's issue 6 in order to find that. Join the yarn in whichever manner works for you. Flip the square over. So now that bottom left corner is in the top right hand side for me. I'm going to chain 3, 1, 2 and 3. Then I'm going to slip stitch into this gap between the two blocks. Then I chain three. This allows me to build the very first block. Flip my work and do three trebles into that gap created by the chain three that we did first. One, two, and three. And so we've built the very first block of square two. Now you're going to turn your work, flip your work as you need to go. That's why having your little stitch marker in here helps to keep you on track to where you are. So the next thing I'm going to do now, I need to start the next row. To do that, I need to chain six. Six. I'm going to treble into UK treble US double. I'm going to treble into the fourth chain from the hook. Then I'm going to create a treble into each of the remaining two chains. Then I'm going to flip my work over and I'm going to slip stitch into the chain three space here. Chain three and make three trebles into that chain three space. One, two, and three. I've just completed row two. Again, it looks very much like the little L when we created the very first corner to corner block, or square rather, and it actually is exactly the same. What we are doing is we are just attaching it to the block before with slip stitches in, on each round, uh, row, I mean, which helps create the join as you go. Slip stitch into the gap between the next two blocks. Chain three. Slip stitch into the next space. Chain three. Now you're going to flip your work over. And then you're going to make three trebles into that chain three 
space that is created by the first set of chain threes. Then you are going to slip stitch into the chain space on the next block, the block to the left. If you're right left-handed, you're going to do this in the opposite manner. Now you make three trebles into the next space. Then you slip stitch into the chain three space at the top of the block next door. Chain three. And then you are going to make three trebles into the chain space. And you have made row three of the corner to corner square number two. So we're back going to start our next row, row four. And for that, we're going to chain six again. So as you can see, just like with the normal corner to corner, you chain six to start every row. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then I'm going to treble into the fourth chain from the hook. I'm going to treble into each of the remaining two chains. I'm going to flip the work over and I'm going to slip stitch into the chain space at the top of the block next door. Then I chain three three trebles into that chain space. Right, then I'm going to slip stitch into the chain three space at the top of the next block. Chain three, three trebles into the next space. Uh, sorry, the same space, my apologies. slip stitch into the top of the next block gap, chain space, three trebles into that chain space. Then I'm going to slip stitch into the gap between the blocks on the square next door. And I have made row four. One, two, three, four. Now you're going to continue in this manner for the next two rows. You're going to make a total of six rows on the increase before you start with the decrease section. I'll meet you there. When you have made the very last block of square two, you're going to work into the corner of the top of the square next door and slip stitch. Flip your work over the right side facing. You know that this is the bottom right hand block and this is the right side. And you will note that we have made six blocks across and six blocks up. So this completes the increase section for the square. Next, we're going to do the decrease section. It is done exactly the same way as the corner to corner square. So you'll see we're building our strip, our very first row of squares from right to left. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to walk you through the first few blocks and then I'm going to catch up with you. So slip stitch into the very first stitch, second stitch, third, and into the chain space. Now we're ready to make the next row. Do you remember that you can use the technique of simply chaining three and slip stitching into the top of the block as I showed you in part one. Now you're going to chain three and you're going to work three trebles into the same chain space. Slip stitch into the block next door, chain three, and work three trebles into the same chain space. Then you're going to slip stitch into the block next door to that. The top of this, the block has the chain space, chain three, and three trebles into the same chain space. 
If you hear snoring or you hear the pitter patter of little feet, it's my three fox terriers. They're currently sleeping under my table, but they sometimes do get up and walk around. Right, I'm in the next block. I've chained three and I'm working three trebles into the same chain space. Let me move that out of the way. Next block, slip stitch, chain three, three trebles into the same space. And what's important now is we aren't going to stack another block on top of this. This is the very last block for this square on this side. We're going to chain, slip stitch I mean, I'm sorry, into the top of the block, flip our work over, and we're going to slip stitch into each stitch across. So that's one, two, three, and then into the chain space. Now we're ready to start the next row. To do that, we chain three, three trebles into the same chain space, slip stitch into the top of the block next door, chain three, three trebles into the same chain space. Just get some working on here. I didn't have much success pulling from the center of these balls for some reason. Slip stitch into the top of the next block, chain three, three trebles. And so you're going to keep on working your decreases in exactly this manner. I'm going to finish showing you this row and then I'm going to leave you to this. Chain three, three trebles into the same chain space. If you find the yarn is very slippery for you, you can try a, wool, oh, sorry, a hook with a little more resistance, such as a wooden hook or bamboo hook, for example. Right, you slip stitch into the very top because we aren't going to build a block on top of that one. So we slip stitch into the top of the last one, flip our work over, and slip stitch into each of the stitches across into the chain three space, which puts us exactly where we need to be to start the next row. So I'm going to meet you at the end. All right, when you finish the very last block, you're going to slip stitch into the chain space next door. And you, you obviously are finished now, but like with any cornered corner, you want to finish in the corner. Slip stitch your way across. Sorry for the household noises. And you are done. Now each block does have two ends. As I said in the beginning of part one, this is not a continuous join as you go. Then you just simply fasten off. Turn your work with right side facing and your first square at the bottom right hand corner and you have done square number two. Now every single square in the first row is built in exactly this manner. So the next video is going to show you in, as in this example, that we're going to join the square on top and then the subsequent squares. You can see I haven't worked my ends way, and this is kind of important. Until you feel that you are 100% comfortable with this pattern, I don't recommend that you work your ends away. I generally do mine every second row. I stop and I work away the ends. The reason for that is I have found that if I realize I did something wrong, the color order wasn't right, I couldn't simply just pull it out, frog it. I had to cut the square out, which is a terrible waste of yarn. Welcome to part three of the Juno tutorial. You will notice in this part that I'm trying different camera angles and different 
zooms to see which works best. I also must please ask you to excuse my voice. I've had tracheitis, which is a bacterial infection of the trachea. Absolutely awful. And But at least my voice is back. Yesterday I had nothing. What I'm going to show you, you'll see this is a previous example that I made. Um, I'm going to show you how to join every square one of every row from row two onwards. Row one was slightly different, but from row two on it'll be the same. And then I'm going to show you how to join every second square from row two and third, fourth, fifth. These are exactly the same. So let's begin. I'm going to take the contrast color here. You would need to refer to the pattern for the proper color order. These colors I'm just doing as I go. They're not indicative of how the pattern works. The first thing we're going to do is join the yarn into the top right hand corner of the first square we want to join to. Then we are going to chain three. Now you will note that this square, this block on the square below runs horizontally. So we need our very first block to run vertically. So what we do is we slip stitch into the gap between the first and second block. Sorry, I'm having a moment. Then we chain three. We're now going to flip our work over and we are going to make three UK trebles, US doubles, into the chain space we created. So one, two, and three. Now I'm sure this is pretty familiar to you because it's more or less how we added the second square of row one. The only difference is we started at the top right hand corner. Now to make row two, we need to chain six and then we need to treble, UK treble US double into the fourth chain from the hook. And then we need to work one treble US double into each of the remaining two chains. Three, so that gives us a total of a chain three and three trebles. Now we're going to flip our work over and we are going to slip stitch into the top of the first block we made. Then we're going to chain three and we are going to make three trebles. UK double, a uh, US double, sorry, into the chain space. Let me just get some working yarn here. Right, and then we are going to slip stitch into the gap between the blocks, chain three, and then we need to slip stitch into the gap between the next block, chain three again. Flip your work over. And then you are going to make three trebles into that chain space we created. One, two, and three. Please remember that once again throughout when I say trebles, I am referring to UK trebles, which are US doubles. We're going to slip stitch into the top of the square next, the block next door, chain three. We're going to work three trebles into that space we created two and three then we're going to slip stitch into the block next door chain three one two three and three trebles into the same chain space now if we flip our work back over you will see that we are working our square exactly the same way we've worked all the others it's just where we joined that's slightly different for this row and so you're going to keep on building flipping your work as you need to and you will see that you will create the very first square so this counts for every square from every first square from row two onwards Welcome to part four of the Juno tutorial. 
In this part, I'm just working on a sample piece that I made. I'm going to show you how you, you join second and subsequent squares from row two onwards. It counts for every row. In the last part, I did show you how to do square one of row two and onwards. And this is for the next. The first thing we're going to do is join our yarn in the corner where the three block of the three squares intersect. This is with our right side facing. You can see our stitch marker. Then we're going to join the yarn in any manner that you like. Chain three. Now you can see that the block here is running on the horizontal. So our first block needs to be run on the vertical. Slip stitch into the gap between the first and second block. Chain three. Flip your work over. And now you're going to work three UK trebles, US doubles into that chain space. Now what gets tricky about this square, although the principles are exactly the same, you're going to find that you're joining on two sides and that makes it a little more complicated. But once you get going, you're going to realize it's so easy. You're now going to slip stitch into this gap here between the first and second block on this square. Chain three. You're going to slip stitch into the next gap and that's going to create the base, the chain space for the next block. Chain three. Flip your work over. Now you're going to work three UK trebles, US doubles into that chain space. Next, we are going to slip stitch into the block, top of the block next door. We're going to chain three. Now we're going to work three UK trebles, US doubles into that chain space. One, two and three then we are going to slip stitch into the gap between the next two blocks chain three slip stitch into the gap between the next two blocks up chain three now we're going to flip our work over and we're going to work three trebles, UK doubles, US doubles, sorry, into that chain space. Two and three. Then we're going to work slip stitch into the top of the block next door, chain three. Then we're going to work three UK trebles, US doubles into the same chain space. Slip stitch into the top of the next block, chain three, and work three UK trebles, US doubles, into the same chain space. Just need to get some work yarn going. Then we're going to slip stitch into the, the gap between the next two blocks, chain three. Slip stitch into the gap between the next two. Chain three again. Flip our work over. And we are going to work three UK trebles, US doubles into the chain space that we created here. One, two, and three. Slip stitch into the top of the block next door. Chain three. Then we are going to work three trebles, UK, US doubles, into the next, into the same, I apologize, chain space. And so we're going to continue. And as you can see, you are joining on two sides. So, but the principle was exactly the same as for the other blocks. And this is how you create it until you get to the end. When you get to the end, you simply do your last slip stitch into the very corner and on this side into the very corner. You flip your work as you go. And when you end, you turn your work right side facing with the marked block in the bottom right hand corner, and you've done it. 
and this is pretty much how the rest of the blanket goes on you carry on in this manner until you have achieved your 143 squares quite a lot but it's a lovely blanket i really hope you thoroughly enjoy it please remember to get yarn magazine j-a-a-r-n magazine issue six it's full of wonderful patterns every issue of yarn is a pleasure all links will be provided including my instagram my blog and my email if you need to get hold of me thank you for watching